Greetings viewer, Eric the Car Guy here. How the heck are you? So what kind of fun do I have for you today? I don't remember if, well, I don't know if you remember uh, when I was taking apart that J-Series V6. I showed briefly a two-stage intake manifold. In other words, there was like a little butterfly on the inside of it. You wonder why that is? Well, I'll tell you why that is. And first, let's start with an explanation of intake uh, runners. Uh, let's just start with how engines work. Engines breathe. They breathe in, they take in new air, and they breathe out, and they expel used, spent exhaust gases. Uh, and this pretty much is how the engine makes power. It breathes just like you and me. It breathes in, it breathes out. It does this via the inlet or intake manifold. You can manipulate intake manifold design to give yourself either more torque or more horsepower. All right, so let's talk about the differences of what you would see in intake manifolds. There are really two different types. There is like large open plenums that you would find on maybe like drag racing cars or something like that. And then there's these closed plenums with these long narrow runners. And there's a difference in the power output, output or the way the engine breathes with those two different types of intakes. Intakes with long narrow tubes, long runners, going down to the intake manifold, and going down to the intake valve, uh, produce more torque and bottom end. And the reason for this is because it allows the air fuel mixture to get a certain amount of velocity before it goes down in. It's kind of like, you know, I've used this analogy before, when you put your thumb over the garden hose as the water's coming out, it comes out a lot faster when you put your finger over the end of it. Now, it's the same volume of water that's coming out, it's just coming out at a higher pressure. It's sort of the same philosophy, well, air works almost, ex air works almost exactly the same as water does. So anything water does, air kind of does too. So with long, narrow runners, what that does is it funnels that air down into that long runner and it, and it causes the air to increase in velocity as it goes down into the engine. And this is really good for like taking off off the line. You get these long, narrow runners. But there comes a point where those long, narrow runners become a restriction. So the engine wants to take in more air it just can't do it because it's got these restrictions. It's got these small tubes. It wants to breathe more, but it can't. So on engines like, like, a, like say, a drag racing engine with, a, with an intake with a big open plenum, like a big, huge hole, and the runners are, are really wide and large, that is made for high-end, top-end horsepower. So when the engine is at its max, it can take in as much air as it possibly can. Now you don't want to get to a point where it's taking in too much, you still want a certain amount of velocity to pass through that intake manifold. But if you want high end power, like at the top of the RPM range, a big open plenum is the way to go. So engineers got kind of clever with these two stage intakes and they give you the best of both worlds. So you get the long narrow runners for the bottom end torque, but then they open up when you need more air at the top end. So rather than me talking about all this theoretical stuff, why don't we poke around at this uh, two-stage intake and just get a look at how it works. All right, let's just start with an overview of this intake. It's actually turned upside down right now because I had to remove the fasteners in order to take this thing apart. But these are where the uh, intake manifold terminates. This is the throttle body up here. So the throttle body is attached to this part of it. In fact, i just remove this part. So this, this is what you would see. The throttle body would be attached to this. Air would go into here. And then into here. And as you can see, it splits apart. And it goes through these long, narrow runners. Now here on the back is the mechanism that basically works the butterfly assembly. And there's a couple of vacuum servos here that you can see. And at certain RPMs or when it's commanded or what have you, the computer basically sends vacuum to these guys and causes this to open up. This right here is the EGR passage. So older legends actually have a problem with these EGR passages clogging up. So let's take it apart and see what we got. Ta-da! Check it out. 
kind of goopy in there, but. All right. Ooh, this is a good example. So remember, our air comes through the throttle body to feed these six cylinders through that bore. It looks like a 70 some millimeter. Somewhere around that area. It comes down into this area. And as you can see, it's, it's kind of nice that it all collects some things down there, down there and all that. Well, here we are. It looks like these things are normally open. Um, and it's only when you close them off that you restrict the airflow up into these upper chambers, which these upper chambers look like they, they go from one side to the other, yeah. So like this hole over here actually terminates here. So this and this are connected. And the other, the other important thing about these is these are all equal length. And that's important because you want, you want the engine to have balance. You don't want any cylinder to get more or less than any of the others so that you've got a smooth running engine. So this is basically the design that you have here. So you've got each one of these holes goes to each one of these other holes. And this gives us the ability to, if we're in a high horsepower situation or, or we, we have a, a demand for lots and lots of horsepower, we want it wide open like this. If we want more torque, we can close these guys off and we only get air through here. So that, that helps restrict the airflow that's, that's coming in. Before I wrap this up, I just had a thought. I would wager that these servos are hooked up to intake vacuum. Because when these servos are active, remember, these plates are closed, okay? When the throttle is closed, remember, when the throttle is closed, intake vacuum is highest. So it would hold these in this position. And as you accelerated, or as you got closer to wide open throttle, intake vacuum would drop off and these would slowly begin to open up until they were wide open. And then you come back down to idle and then they close up again. So that's where I'm thinking. I mean, I'd have to look at it. I don't know for sure if that's how the system works, but I would wager it does work that way because if, if these were at idle, they wouldn't even have to have any kind of controls on them or anything like that, really. You could really just run straight intake vacuum to them and then calibrate the springs and things to work against that intake vacuum to open up as you got closer to wide open throttle. Pretty ingenious design, I think. But a lot of manufacturers have gone to these two-stage intakes to, to take advantage of the, the principles that I just described to you. Long, narrow runners for low-end torque. Big open plenum for high-end horsepower. And that's pretty much the takeaway for you. Well, okay, that's our lesson for the day. Long, narrow runners, high velocity, good for bottom-end torque. Big open plenums, good for high-end horsepower, allows the engine to take in as much air as it can take in. And once again, you go too big, you'll actually starve the engine. You need to have a certain amount of restriction. You need to find out exactly how much air that engine can take in and then you calibrate the intake size accordingly. So, you know, those of you out there that want to make more power out of your engines and things like that, these are the places that, that you get it. This is how you've got to think. And these engineers, I think, are pretty clever coming up with a system, putting them on just basically stock factory cars and throwing them out there, and trucks also. So, two-stage intakes, really cool. Well, I hope you found this educational. Uh, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com where if you have automotive questions, I would ask that you go there and ask our friendly little search function, which is getting better and better every single day. And if you don't get an answer there, head on over to our forum, sign up if you're not signed up already. It's free, all you need is an email address and we'll be happy to uh, try and answer your questions there. Uh, you can also find me at Google+, Facebook, Twitter, and I post videos here at Eric the Car Guy on Mondays and Fridays, so look for me then. Anyway, I close with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. Two-stage intakes, a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.